Do you think part of the problem is that we're the the amount of people that have actually gone to war in this country? Mm. First of all, there's there's people that are in the army or in all the armed forces. They're they're volunteers. Everyone volunteers. There's no draft. There's no um, national requirement to join the military like there is in Israel and like there is in South Korea and many other countries. We. The, the people that have experience with the war are the ones that are telling you this is dangerous. People like yourself are telling us this is dangerous, but to the rest of the world, to the rest of this country, there's a real problem with day-to-day -day existence because day-to-day -day existence is tricky, and it, it gives you parameters which you exist in, but they're not real. They're not real. They're not real. You, they're only real right now. And if you invite war, you now are like these videos that you can watch. I don't know if you're on Telegram. <sighs> There are some fucking videos from yeah. this war Did, on, like, in the woods, ground fighting. I've seen them. Heavy, heavy shit. And I don't think people that show up every day at the same Starbucks and then get on the highway and go to their office and repeat every fucking day, I don't think they think of that as a real option in the world. Think, but it is. Think of daily life as ketamine, okay? So you've got people walking around completely dissociated because everything in their daily environment tells them to pick up the dry cleaning. Right. And, you know, oh. Everything's fine. Well, what's on Netflix? Yeah. Um, at least in the Cuban Missile Crisis, my father was driving across country. I said, you knew it was the, he said, everybody knew it was the Cuban Missile Crisis. Every single town that he drove through, he would stop and the TV would be on. People were talking about it, right? We are in some world where, and, and I think that we have to just talk about the fact that the United States is attacking ordinary, intelligent human beings by depriving them of any basic knowledge of what is actually going on. We don't know what happened with the origin of COVID. We have no idea about Epstein. We don't know what's going on with the vaccines. We don't understand the source of the inflation. We blinded ourselves from looking at the M1 monetary aggregate when the Fed pumped us full of cheap cash. We have no clue how to resolve, um, you know, something as dumb as the Epstein. To whom did, did Ghislaine traffic? I don't know. Yeah, well, can't find it. Sorry, bye. So Click. this is what's causing, in part, our friends to go crazy. Mm. You know, several years ago, Sam Harris had good input. Jordan Harrison, uh, Jordan Peterson had good input. Brett Weinstein had good input. Most of them, I don't think, have figured out that they're starved for information and that, and I'm going to say something very heterodox to the heterodoxy. The heterodoxy was never meant to take over for the orthodoxy. The orthodoxy was something that needed correction. The purpose of the heterodoxy is to say, oh, you're, you're 12 degrees off, you're three degrees off. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you're like 168 degrees off? And all, you know, like the fine tuning that heterodoxy can do is not sufficient to correct the ship. And what we're being, what's happening to us, and I said this to Sam at a dinner with Dave Rubin right before Trump took over. I said, Sam, if you don't take a different approach to Trump, he's going to blow out your circuits. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, for every ambiguous thing that you can't resolve with Trump, um, raise two to that power. So if he puts three ambiguities uh, in a series, you have two to the third possibilities of what could be true. That's eight. He can create a decision tree that explodes faster than you, Sam Harris, can think, right? There's no way you can get to two to the fourth possibilities on a decision tree. And Sam, did, I don't think he understood the perspective. And so what happened was we were all swimming in this world where nobody could tell which end was up. Nobody can resolve anything. And I think a lot of this has to do... I'm not sure I understand what you were just saying there. Okay. The, this decision tree thing that, that Sam, he was going to... Explain that. So let's imagine, for example, that I'm staying at a local hotel. Okay. And you don't know whether I'm staying at the Hyatt or the Four Seasons. Okay. And you also can't figure out whether I'm leaving at 1 o'clock or at 2 o'clock. And you don't know whether I'm going to be arriving by... Um, a white Prius or a black uh, Escalade. You now have too many possibilities 
as to, well, what's the, the drive time for those two hotels is different. I don't know which car I'm looking for. There are eight possibilities now of what could actually be happening because those are all independent. Right. When Trump created ambiguities or now the Biden group is creating ambiguities by not telling us what's actually going on, you don't know how serious this uh, East Palestine, uh, Ohio spill is. Is this something that's going to burn off pretty easily or is this getting into the corn crop that's going to be found in all processed food? I don't know. I don't know how It's a very good question. Right. Okay. So just every day you're being assaulted by completely unnecessary ambiguities. Mm. And, and, you know, th this is... But why, but why then the Trump thing? Why his? Why would his derangement towards Trump? Well, because blow Trump, out of circuits. Sam made one terrible call with Trump. He said that he was the uh, an evil Chauncey Gardner, like a simpleton, like Mr. Magoo, mm. just happens to wander into the Oval Office as the first, no, gov per first president with zero government experience, including the armed services. Bullshit. Trump. Maybe a savant, but he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. If you do not give that devil its due, you're toast. Yeah, it's silly to say that he's dumb because he's different. He says some dumb stuff sometimes, but oftentimes he's talking off the top of his head. Oh, I don't even like uh, maybe use some bleach, clean it out. Remember that? Uh, exactly. Use some. Uh, but meanwhile, one of the things that he said about using uh, light. Right. It actually, they came up with a process of doing that. That was an actual procedure that they would use, where they use ultraviolet light inside a person's lungs and kill the COVID virus. This was like a, a concept that they were actually putting forth as being possible. So what he said, even though it sounded ridiculous, right. like, get light into their body, <laughs> it, actually, <laughs> I it know. actually was right. But that's the thing. So then a bunch of people said, okay, right. I'm going to put a minus sign in front of Trump. Everything that he says is yeah. just wrong. They right? can't they say, do that. Well, they do this to Alex Jones. They yeah. do this to James O'Keefe, and they'll do it to you and me. They de they've definitely done it to me. They've de definitely done it to you, too. It's a thing that people do. Look, just because someone – look, I say dumb things all the time, constantly. My kids uh, make never, fun of me. I never do. I am always saying dumb things because I, I talk sometimes before I totally think. But right. then I go, oh, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense. 